Well hello everyone, my name is Zwigo and welcome back to another video. Today I have a new series for you guys. I will be playing through the Elite Four of Pokemon Unbound and of course the Champion as well on the hardest difficulty which is the insane difficulty. But I won't be doing it with regular teams, I'll be playing through the Elite Four with Monotype teams every single time. This time we're going to be taking a look at the electric typing. But why is this even remotely hard? Well, the difficulty itself states that it's insane. And it kinda is. All of the Pokemon in the Elite Four are competitively viable and I'm pretty sure that they're all EV trained to the max. And every Elite Four member has their own gimmick. For example, the ground type Elite Four member Mole Man has a Sandstorm in his battle that will never go away and do more damage than a regular Sandstorm. So even if you try to use Rain Dance or whatever or a Sunny Day, the Sandstorm will not go away and your move will fail. Besides that, every Elite Four member also has their own Legendary, which is just insane to deal with because the Fairy One has a Geomancy Xerneas with a White Herb. And I'm sure everyone that plays competitive Pokemon knows that this is very, very broken and that's why it's banned in normal competitive as well. Let's analyze the Elite Four members a little bit more. Let's start off with the Ground Type 1 Mole Man. His team consists of Mega Aerodactyl, Excadrill, Quagsire, Gliscor, Landorus, and as his legendary he has a Groudon. He basically runs a Sandstorm team, which is very very bad for this challenge that I'm doing right now, because you know, electric types don't really work well against ground types. Let's move on to the second Elite Four member, which is Elias, and he specializes in ghost types, and his team consists of a Mimikyu, an Aegislash, a Chandelure, a Blacephalon, a Mega Gengar, and as his legendary, he has a Giratina. The third Elite Four member is Annabelle with her fairy types. Her team consists of Alolan Ninetales, Sylveon, Azumarill, Togekiss, Mega Mawile, and finally as the legendary, she has a Xerneas. Now let's move on to the final Elite Four member. This one is Penny and she specializes in dragon types. She has a Tyrantrum, a Gudra, a Como O, a Dragonite, a Mega Altaria, and as the legendary, she has a Curum White. So those are all the Elite Four members. So let's see what my team is going to be to go up against all of these amazing Pokemon. So the first Pokemon I decided on was Rotom Wash. He will be my defensive tank and I will be running leftovers on him as well as max HP and max defense. For the moves on him I went with Will-O-Wisp, Toxic, Substitute and Hydro Pump. As you may have expected because this is absolutely going to be a stall Pokemon. As my specially defensive tank I went with Zapdos. I also run it with leftovers and I spread its EVs over HP, special defense and speed. And the moves that I'm running on Zabdos are Heatway for coverage, Discharge, Hidden Power Ice because that's just going to be very useful against the Dragon type and Ground type Elite Four member. And finally Roost just to get that HP recovery going. With the next Pokemon I went with Tapu Koko. The biggest reason is because he has the Electric Surge ability which sets up an electric terrain if he goes into battle. On him I'm running Max Speed and Max Special Attack as well as a Magnet just to boost those electric type moves a little bit further. With his moveset I went with Volt Switch, Dazzling Gleam, Hidden Power Ice and Thunderbolt. And he was definitely one of the most crucial team members here. The next Pokemon is Magnezone, which is going to be my special attacking sweeper. I'm running Choice Picks on him to boost those special attacking moves even more. And I'm also running Max Special Attack and Max Speed. And as the move said, I went with Flash Cannon, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, and Hidden Power Grass, which is just going to be super useful against the Ground Type Elite Four member. As my Mega on the team, I went with Mega Manectric. He was probably the worst Pokemon on the team and I probably could have switched him out for something else. But on him I'm running Max Special Attack, Max Speed and his moveset is Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Toxic and Hidden Power Ice. But Toxic is a move that I can switch out for anything. The only thing that my team was missing at this moment was a physical attacker and that's why I went with Zera Aura. He's an amazing glass cannon, one of the best team members by far. On him I'm running max speed and max attack. I'm also running him with a life orb just to boost those attacking moves even more. And his moveset consists of plasma fists, close combat, grass knot and fire punch which I'm pretty sure I never even used fire punch. And this was the first time where I actually build 
a competitive team and EV trained them. Like I've never EV trained in my life. And to be completely honest, I had a lot of fun making this video. So before we jump into the fights, don't forget to smash that like button and let me know what type you want me to do next. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the first elite four member fight with Elias. His special ability, as I can say it here, is that ghost Pokemon take half damage if they're at full health. Does that sound overpowered? Because it is. The game purposely puts you at a disadvantage. But does that mean we're gonna stop here? No. He starts off with his Mimikyu. So I decide to lead off with Tabu Koko and set up the electric terrain immediately. I then go for the Thunderbolt to break the disguise and do a little bit of damage as the Mimikyu sets up a Swords Dance. The Mimikyu then decides to go for two Shadow Sneaks which leaves my Tabu Koko with only 3 HP but two more Thunderbolts and I can take out Mimikyu. The next Pokemon is Aegislash and I predicted that it was going to go for Shadow Sneak so I switched in Magnezone. He switched into Blade Form and then my Thunderbolt just wrecked it from full health. Next up is Blacephalon and I just decide to sack my Magnezone here because I know that nothing is going to take a hit from this well. So he flamethrowers me and then I switch in Rodom Wash. I could try to stall it out with Toxic but I don't think that with a beast boost Rodom is going to take a lot of hits so I decide to go for two Hydro Pumps to take down Blacephalon. Next up is the worst team member of his Giratina. This thing will not die. Its strategy with this thing is just burning you with Will-O-Wisp or either going for Toxic, then he can set up a rest to heal if he's at low health, and he also has the move Hex, so if you have a status condition, Hex does a bunch of damage. So I tried to go for the Toxic, but the Giratina outsped me and took me out with a Hex. I then decided to go into Manectric to try and, of course, poison it with Toxic and whittle it down that way. I was able to get off the Toxic and hit two hidden powers before the Giratina took me down, by toxicing me and killing me with two hexes once again. I then decided to swap in Zebdos, and luckily two hidden powers combined with the toxic damage were enough to take down Giratina, even though it was able to burn me. Next up is Chandelure, and I was debating on switching out here, but I decided to just go for a couple of discharges and try to get the paralysis off. As the Chandelure set up two Calm Mines, I was already pretty afraid, but luckily my second discharge was able to paralyze it. I hit one more discharge and eventually my Zapdos goes down to a flamethrower. So I go into Zera Aura and go for the Plasma Fist in order to take down Chandelure, and then he sends out his final Pokemon, Gengar, which he is of course going to Mega Evolve. He hits the Sludge Wave, which does a lot of damage, but I'm able to get off one Plasma Fist. Sadly enough, after that, Gengar finishes me off with a Shadow Ball. So I go into my final hope, Tapu Koko, and I manage to outspeed and kill it from this range with a Thunderbolt. Now that was a very close first Elite Four member battle. I literally won this fight with only 3 HP left on my final Pokemon. Believe me, the insane difficulty on Pokemon Unbound isn't anything to be messed with. Now let's go on to the second Elite Four member, which is of course immediately the hardest one, Mole Man and his ground types. Now before we get into the actual fight, let's go over his strategy a little bit. This is a double battle and as I explained earlier, the Sandstorm in this battle does not go away and does more damage than a regular Sandstorm. Now his first thing that he does is very weird. He has an Aerodactyl and he just spams Wide Guard with it so that you can't use moves like Surf or Discharge, which I wasn't going to do anyway. So my first thought was if I just leave this Aerodactyl on the field and it's just going to keep spamming Wide Guard, then I can just take out the second Pokemon very easily every single time, right? Wrong. Because if any of his Pokemon take down my Zapdos, it's over, because Zapdos is the only Pokemon that can actually stand up to most of his team. And actually, Rodon Wash is also very important, because I need to Will-O-Wisp three of his Pokemon. Those being Excadrill, the... Mega Aerodactyl will sometimes go for Earthquake or Rock Slide, which is devastating, so I also have to Will-O-Wisp him. And I also have to Will-O-Wisp his Groudon, because if I don't burn his Groudon, I lose. That's an automatic loss. It will just take down my Zapdos with Rock Slide and kill the rest of my team with Pressable Blades. Quaxar is also a very annoying Pokemon. The thing with Quaxire is, it barely goes down except if I hit a Hidden Power Grass with my Magnezone or a Grass Knot with my Zera Aura. But the reason why Quaxire is annoying is because it always goes for Yawn and puts half of my team to sleep. Besides that, it also has a Gliscor, which loves to set up Tailwind for his next Pokemon, Landorus. And together they just go for Earthquake and wreck everything on my team. So in order to take the least amount of damage from the Sandstorm, I decided to put Safety Goggles on my Zapdos, so that he would not take any damage whatsoever from the Sandstorm, and that if I get low in HP, I can just ruse 
boost up. Yes, that did get rid of my leftovers recovery, but that literally gets cancelled out by the sandstorm anyway. So how did I win this? Let's get right into the battle. On the first turn I always go for Will-O-Wisp on the Excadrill because otherwise Zabdos is in a very bad position. On the second turn I roost up with Zabdos and I Will-O-Wisp the Aerodactyl as well. Then I go for the Hydro Pump Hidden Power combo on Excadrill in order to take it out and the next Pokemon he sends out is Groudon. And this was actually very bad because the Groudon was able to hit two rock slides while I healed up my Zabdos with Roosts and take out my Rodom without me being able to set up a Will-O-Wisp because of the flinches. So I swapped in Magnezone because I wasn't going to give up yet. The Groudon proceeded to go for rock slide because it wanted to take out my Zabdos. But he wasn't able to do enough damage so I just kept on healing up with the Roost and my Magnezone kept on going for Hidden Power until I eventually killed the Groudon after it flinched me a couple of times. So with Groudon down he decides to send in a Landorus. And after that the Aerodactyl and Landorus both run for Rock Slide in order to take down my Magnezone and Zapdos. So I swapped in my Mega Manectric and Tapu Koko, set up the Electric Terrain which is literally useless here, and I double upped on the Landorus with two Hidden Power Ices. Luckily this was enough to take it down from full health though. The stupid Aerodactyl is still abusing Wide Guard, I have no idea why, but eventually the burn damage also took him down on this turn. Now he sent out his last two Pokemon, Gliscor and Quaxar, so I went for the Hidden Power Ice twice on Gliscor once again to take it out from full health. And now I knew I won because his final Pokemon was Quaxar, which basically couldn't do any damage and its only gimmick was using Yawn. So I decided to go for Toxic Manectric and then go for the Dazzling Gleam with Tapu Koko as it hit me with a Muddy Water. I then hit him with a Hidden Power Dazzling Gleam combo and he took me down with the Sandstorm damage combined with a Muddy Water next turn. So I send out my final Pokemon Zero Aura and I went for the Grass Knot in order to finish off Quaxar and win this battle so that now we can move on to the third Elite 4 member which is Penny and her Dragon types. This is once again a double battle and her ability is that the secondary effect of moves happens way more frequently and she loves, loves to abuse this. For example, she has a Tyrantrum and a Gudra. The Gudra always goes for Muddy Water in order to lower your accuracy, and her Tyrantrum always goes for Rock Slide in order to flinch you, which is super annoying. Besides that, she also has a Curum White with Dragon Breath to try and paralyze you, but this effect also works in my favor. So if I, for example, go for a Discharge, I can paralyze her way more frequently than normal. But in my opinion, the biggest threat on her team is her Kamo O, which just does insane damage with Clanging Scales, which is a multi-hitting move and it also lowers his defenses, but it can really shred through my team. But despite all this, Penny really was one of the more easy Elite Four members. So we start off the battle and I lead off with Tapu Koko and Magnezone and she leads off with Tyrantrum and Gudra. I go for the Dazzling Gleam Flash Cannon combo in order to take down Tyrantrum first turn. Of course the Gudra is able to hit a Muddy Water and lower my Tapu Koko's accuracy. The next Pokemon is immediately Kamo O. And I knew that I had to shut this thing down as quickly as possible, so I went for the same combo once again, taking down Kamo O too. After that, the Gudra sadly enough took down my Tapu Koko with Muddy Water. So I switch in my Mega Manectric and she switches in her Kyurem White. I go for the Hidden Power Ice on Gudra and try to get off a Flash Cannon on Kyurem, but the Fusion Flare takes out my Magnezone. So I switch in Zera Aura and I know that I'm outspeeding this Kyurem, I go for the close combat and it takes it out from full health. I also go with one more hidden power in order to almost take down Gudra, and of course I get hit by another Muddy Water lowering my accuracy. She then swaps in her Dragonite, so I go for the close combat on Gudra to take it out and a hidden power ice on the Dragonite. I also get a critical hit, but the Dragonite also gets a crit with Rock Slide taking down my Zeraora. I then swap in Zabdos and she sends out her Altaria. I once again go for hidden power ice on Dragonite to take it out, and I also hit a hidden power ice on the Altaria to do some chip damage. The Altaria then goes for a heat wave which does take down my Manectric. I then go into my last hope Rodom and I toxic the Altaria. We get hit with two hyper voices but my Zabdos goes for two hidden powers and eventually the last hyper voice kills my Rodom and leaves my Zabdos with literally one HP. But after that the toxic damage finally kills the Altaria and I won this fight with only 1 HP left. Now for the next battle we're going to be taking on Annabelle and the first thing that I have to do is teach my entire team 
Thunder Wave. Because I need to be able to paralyze the Xerneas, otherwise I am never going to be able to take it down because of the Geomancy boosts. And that's basically her entire strategy. If you manage to take down the Xerneas, you've basically won. She does also have a huge power Azumarill with Belly Drum which can get annoying, and a Mega Mawile which does a lot of damage too. But besides Xerneas, this team is really not that hard to take down. And her ability is that there is always a misty terrain going on and this also ups the special defense of fairy type Pokemon. But besides that, I went into the fight with a lot of confidence. So she leads off with an Alolan Ninetales and I lead off with Tapu Koko, setting up my electric terrain immediately, which does nullify the misty terrain. I decide to go for Thunderbolt immediately, but we get roared out after that. She roars in my Zapdos, hits me with a Blizzard which does about half of my health, and then I finish off Ninetales with Heat Wave. Next up is Xerneas and I already know what I have to do. I go for Thunder Wave to shut it down. It still does go for Geomancy to get its boosts, and my Zapdos is able to hit one more Discharge before we go down to a Moonblast. Because this Xerneas can now one-shot my entire team, I decide to go into Magnezone, go for the Flash Cannon which does more than half of our health, but a Moonblast still takes me down. I then switch in Zero Aura, go for the Plasma Fist, and this is enough from this range to take down Xerneas, and it was only able to kill two of my Pokémon. Next up is Azumarill, which hits one Aqua Jet, but my Plasma Fists take it down from full health. Next up is Sylveon, and I am able to take that thing down with three Plasma Fists, because its Hyper Voice changed into the Electric Typing, and I have Volt Absorb, so she actually gave me some extra HP. Next up is Togekiss, and that thing outspeeds me, and kills my Zero Aura with a Dazzle. Gleam. I then go into Tapu Koko, set up my electric terrain and take down Togekiss with a Thunderbolt to the face. Her last Pokemon is Mawile and I'm able to hit one more Thunderbolt before it takes me down with Iron Head. I then switch into Manectric, Mega Evolve and finish this battle with another Thunderbolt. Now that's the Elite Four out of the way. Let's move on to the champion battle. And this time it's actually not against Jax, you have to fight your rival which I named YouTube, to defend your title as a champion. But this was a super easy battle, which I actually won on my first attempt. I had no idea what his team was, so I decided to lead off with Tapu Koko to set up the electric terrain, but as it turns out, he led off with a Mamoswine, so I immediately had to switch out. I rented into Rodon Wash, predicting an earthquake, but he actually set up some stealth rocks. So I went for the Hydro Pump, but he switches in his Haxorus. And immediately after that he goes for a Dragon Dance, so I decided to go for the will o -Wisp to burn it and shut him down. I then set up a substitute as he switched out into Vaporeon. I then went for will o -Wisp, which was probably the dumbest thing to do, I should have gone for Toxic. But eventually the Vaporeon breaks my substitute, and that's when I decide to switch out my Rodom for Zapdos. I do get some very decent damage by Scald, but my Discharge is able to finish off Vaporeon combined with the burn damage from will o -Wisp. He then sent out his best Pokemon Tyranitar, so I immediately switch into Rodom again. He went for the Dragon Dance, and I don't want this thing to sweep my team, so I, I will o -Wisp him once more. I do get hit with a Stone Edge on my Rodom, which does a lot of damage, but I'm able to get off a Substitute. Next turn, he breaks my Substitute with a Crunch, and I go for the Hydro Pump and get a critical hit. Sadly enough, the turn after, my Rodom gets taken out by another Crunch, but the Tyranitar also goes down to the burn damage. I then decide to go into Magnezone, and he goes into to Mamoswine. I try to get off a Flash Cannon but the Mamoswine outspeeds and wrecks me with an Earthquake. I then go into Zero Aura and go for a Grass Knot which leaves him with 1 HP because of a Focus Sash. And with another Earthquake he takes down Zero Aura. I then go into Tapu Koko because I think that I can outspeed him but he goes through the Ice Shard and I then take him down with Dazzling Gleam. Next on out is 2 Cannon but this thing can't even touch me because I'm faster and a Thunderbolt kills him from full health once again. He then comes out with his Haxorus once more and then Dazzling Gleam is enough to take him down, and then he goes into his final Pokemon, Volcanion. Luckily my Thunderbolt is once again enough to Oko the Volcanion as well, and this finishes the battle with YouTube. Which means that we were successful in our quest to complete Pokemon Unbound on the insane difficulty with only electric types. This was probably the most fun I've had in Pokemon in a long time, because I've 
actually learn something new. Online I learned a little bit about how to build a competitive team and I of course also had to look up which EVs I had to invest in, which natures I had to get and this is really something that I have never done in Pokemon before. And yes I bet that I could have built a way better team but I felt like going with these Pokemon not only because I like most of them but also because they really fit together well as a unit. If you got any more tips on maybe some things that I could have done better, definitely leave them down in the comments below. As well as the next type challenge that I should do in Pokemon Unbound, you could also leave a team. I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to make that team, but maybe I can pick some Pokemon that you guys leave in the comments and use them in the next video. But with that out of the way, I of course want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters as always. If you want to sign up yourself, the link is in the description. And as always, people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, share this video with your friends. I'm Zwiggo, and I'll see you guys next time.